Good evening. This is uh, Unexplained Reality. I'm Brian Quinn. This is with, with me is my son. Harrison Quinn. And uh, this is a new podcast that we're trying to get up on its feet. Um, it's going to be about the unexplained. Unexplained but real. Um, to kick off our first episode, we thought we would do a, a homegrown or local legend since we're from South Carolina and uh, we're about 50 miles from ground zero where all this activity happened. Um, majority of which was in 1988, but anyways, most of you will know, we're talking about the Lizard Man of Bishopville, South Carolina. And uh, so that's going to be our first episode tonight. So uh, we enjoy, uh, would enjoy or appreciate any comments that you guys can provide to uh, yeah, help us build this podcast and um, you yeah. know, this is new to us, and we're just trying to figure it out, and uh, we want to make it something that somebody who actually wants to listen to would be pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, any news, buddy? Anything? Um, the world is kind of quiet right now. Yeah. yeah. Some crazy stuff going on, but there's always crazy stuff going on. Um, I guess we got real good news. The Gamecocks are going to the Final Four basketball. And uh, we'll see what the Lady Gamecocks do. They're in the Elite Eight also. So uh, the the men um, uh, advanced to the Final Four just a little while ago. So uh, that's good. So we might be bringing home a national championship. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So um, anyways, I guess we'll just roll right into it if you want to. Yeah. I think. All right. Well, this is uh, the Lizard Men of Bishopville, South Carolina. So, um, yeah, like I said, there's been mo- majority of the, I guess, the big, I don't know what you would call it, the big uh, craze or uh, the, the majority of the sightings that went down happened in 1988 in Bishopville or just outside of Bishopville, South Carolina, in a community called Browntown. And uh, majority of the sightings um, primarily were you know based around Browntown Road, but um, we'll get into to those and kind of break it down and see see what we come up with. So you got any any opening regards or arguments or um, comments about uh, the Lizard Man in well, general? You know, a lot of people are you know on the fence about it. A lot of people are you know skeptical about a lot of things, but I I really do think that the lizard man could be something that's out there along with you know, Bigfoot and a lot of those other really big uh, cryptids and stories like that. But um, the lizard man isn't necessarily you know just a lizard man. I mean you know not saying that I know or anything, but you know there's descriptions of encounters vary a lot. Some say he has glowing eyes. Some say he has fur. You know there's a lot of variety in all of the uh, encounters so you know there's not necessarily one description or one picture we can paint of him but you know it just you know keep an open mind don't uh you know vary it down or narrow it down to one thing but um with that there's the one famous encounter that happened around uh escape or swamp uh the young man was riding home in his car and he stopped to change a flat tire and uh just as he was finishing up He saw a large creature around seven feet, I think is uh, how he described it. Uh, Scaly hands, glowing eyes, you know, the kind of average description. And then he got in his car and tried to drive away from it. And it grabbed onto his roof, mangled his roof and his car and his bumper. And, you know, that was where uh, probably it started, where the story started. Um... If you want to lead off with some other encounters, or but you know, well, you know, yeah, I mean, that was that was the one that got all the publicity. Uh, the young man's name was Christopher Davis. Um, he was 17 years old. Had gotten off work at McDonald's, um, and apparently had some uh, fish or fillet sandwiches in his car, and was on his way home on Browntown Road when he got a flat, like two o'clock in the morning. He uh, pulled over to change that flat and uh, after he got it fixed and was getting ready to get back in his car he noticed a creature coming across the field at him with glowing red eyes um and uh, obviously 
it was coming at him aggressively and you know as anybody would be you know scared i would be yeah and uh he ran and jumped in his car and started to take off well this creature chased him and grabbed a hold of his door handle and um as he accelerated uh supposedly getting up to 35 miles an hour and the animal was keeping up with him and jumped on top of his car and um he did some evasive maneuvers you know swerving back and forth and eventually the creature came off and uh, he took off and i mean this kid was startled this kid was not just you know it wasn't just a oh yeah this you know he saw some normal creature i mean it legitimately scared him because his father you know i quoting what his father said was you know something to affect his son rolled into the yard jumped out of the car while it was still running and ran into the house and went to his bedroom and he kind of you know in passing told his dad what happened his dad had to go out and cut the car off and lock it up and everything so you know he was legitimately scared um you know and when he it, it was like two weeks later or so when they his father took him to the sheriff's department the lee county sheriff's department and saw uh sheriff truesdale um liston truesdale was the sheriff at that time in lee county south carolina and um he was the one that took the report and he believed the kid he was like you know it, something scared him you know it was he wasn't making this up. Um, so you're talking about a career law enforcement officer believed this kid. So uh, who are we to question, you know, whether it's valid? I mean, whether it was a really a reptilian creature or, you know, amphibious humanoid, you know, who knows, but he saw something. Um, and there's been, you know, speculation, um, you know, I, there's some that say that the creature was it could have been a bigfoot with like dried up mud on him that cracked and looked like scales to give him a reptilian look yeah who knows i mean when a seven foot thing with red eyes glowing attacks your car you know it doesn't really matter at that point um but it, it what what I, I you know i read um i've done a lot of research about it but i read lyle blackburn's book about the lizard man the bishopville monster and um he uh you know in that book it, it was interesting because there were so many i mean i grew up hearing about the lizard man i mean i was living you know here in columbia south carolina um when all that happened in 1988 so um i remember the news reports i remember i had a brother that worked for a local restaurant called the lizard's thicket and he brought home Lizard Man, wanted Lizard Man shirts and all this for us. It was the coolest thing ever. Um, and I guess back then we didn't really, I, I guess I didn't really think of it as, wow, this really did happen. To me, it was kind of fantasy and blah, blah, blah. But the majority of the sightings you heard, and uh, I mean, really the primary sighting you heard about was the Christopher Davis story. What I didn't realize until reading Lyle Blackburn's book was, there were sightings up to like two years prior to that where somebody had witnessed, you know, something and um, close to escape or swamp. So, but they never came forward because, you know, I don't know, it's country people, uh, small town, they didn't want to get ridiculed. It's the normal, you know, the normal things. Um, so that was very interesting to me. But um, there was... Uh, you know, even after that, there were sightings. I mean, you had, uh, there was two teenagers that saw a, a dark, muscular creature on two feet, you know, run across in front of them, uh, across the highway. Um, then there was, uh, sometime around, you know, the Christopher Davis sighting, there was, um, um, the Bramlett Road tracks. Um, some, uh, I guess cops were, canvassing the area or whatever doing investigations they got reports about uh trash and litter on bramlett road and they went to investigate and found like five gallon metal buckets that were like crushed and there was just all kinds of garbage all over this road and then they found tracks um 
So, you know, the the investigators or whatever that found them, you know, they were pretty worked up about it. And I guess they called South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. And natural resource people came out and they looked at it and they were like kind of blew off the tracks. They were like, you know, they didn't think they were real. Well, you know, at that time, you know, they were... It was the heat of the moment, but looking back, if you look at the tracks, they look very fabricated. Um, they're they're kind of cheesy, but you know, it is what it is. But um, and those were the the three toe tracks, but they're very skinny, long with three toes, and all three toes look identical. They really look like somebody cut off a wooden dowel and just kind of you know pressed them into the ground or whatever. So, um, but then you got. Um, George Holloman, I can't remember exactly, but I should have put dates down, but George Holloman might have been the one that was about two years prior to the Christopher Davis sighting. I'm not positive on that, but um, it was he was it was on Browntown Road, Skateboard Swamp. Uh, uh, yeah, he was on the Skateboard Swamp Bridge, um, apparently walked down to the bridge and was just hanging out. I'm not sure if he was fishing or whatever, but he was grabbing a cigarette it was getting dark and um he witnessed a creature and i guess they made eye contact and um he just described it as a large a large massive creature um but uh, because it was dark there was not a lot of detail um but he didn't by no means say it was a yeah lizard man um george plyler he was another witness. He happened to witness, you know, a creature. But then again, there again, it wasn't a necessarily a lizard man. Um, I think uh, he was working with some guys close to his house and witnessed um, witnessed something. But uh, I think it was kind of behind a tree. But he didn't tell the guys he was working with because he didn't want them to you know ridicule him either you know these are tough guys working guys and yeah who wants that kind of uh ridicule um this one i found very interesting was frank mitchell he's a crop duster in lee county and um he witnessed a creature as he was taken off he was um he said that morning when he was going to you know to do his rounds, you know, fertilizing fields or whatever. Um, he couldn't get an early start because it was, a, I guess, a heavy dew that night. And um, he had to wait for that to burn off and uh, or foggy or something. So he didn't get started till I think it was around 10 o'clock on his takeoff. And he, when he went to take off, as he was taking off, a creature walked across his runway. This creature was described as large, massive, hairy, completely fur covered bipedal um no scales no claws for you know i mean it was a typical bigfoot sighting sasquatch sighting honestly um he got airborne tried to get his plane turned around in time to come back and look at it and but he couldn't by the time he got turned around um the creature had already went into the the woods on the other side of his runway um then you go a couple years out from 88 and you get the Blythers family. Um, there was a family that was late at night on Browntown Road. Um, this was August 1990, so this was two years after Christopher Davis sighting um, and the majority of the other sightings. Um, and this family was driving down Browntown Road and they saw something on the side of the road and slowed down and I think the daughter was in the front seat with the window kind of cracked or rolled down maybe. And the creature like, maybe it wasn't rolled down. I can't remember. But anyways, the creature came very close. I mean, it was like right up to the side of the car and, um, really traumatized the whole family. The the son that was in the back and the mom and, and the daughter that was, you know, in, in the passenger seat that got the real close, uh, was in the closest proximity to the creature. Um, and then another very, very interesting one was the Brian and Michelle Elmore, fall of 1991. Um, 
I don't. They were near Brown Town Road. I think a, a, a intersecting road to Brown Town Road, and um, they witnessed a creature on the side of the road. Didn't know what it was. I think it was hunched over or something. And um, they passed it and then came back, turned around and came back to see what it was. And it was standing up or it stood up as it went by. And when they turned around and came back, it was on standing there in the road. And their, their actual statement to um, the police, which I don't think they came forward right away. Um, it was after telling this and sharing the story with some family and friends, they finally came forward. But their actual statement was they saw a Sasquatch. So it was a hair covered, bipedal, large, massive, gorilla like, you know, animal. Um, then we get to the weird part, I guess, of uh, kind of the lizard man was, you know, it, it kind of went that, you know, we heard about Christopher Davis, and that was the, the biggest hoopla was about that sighting, the Christopher Davis sighting on Browntown Road. Um, and it, it got kind of quiet over the years, but. Then, um, there was, uh, in 2008, the Rawsons, um, reported, they called the, the Sheriff's Department and reported that their Dodge Caravan, or Grand Caravan, bumper had been destroyed or chewed on, and, um, they had this, you know, their van, they parked it outside the night before, went to bed, and the next morning, the, the, the husband got up, went outside, and... Eh, what do you know? My bumper's got teeth marks all over it. The fender's pulled, you know, kind of bent out of shape, and it's got puncture wounds. Or, I guess not wounds, because it's a car, but puncture holes. Um, And so there's speculation around that. Like, what could do this, you know? Um, I don't know. I've heard of, like, you know, squirrels. I have a friend who, who has squirrels chewing on their bumper because of something apparently in the bumper that it likes. But it wouldn't do this kind of damage. I mean, you can look online and see the pictures or you can look at Law Blackburn's book and see the damage. But I remember when this story was reported in the news because it was like, oh, the lizard man is back, you know. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of damage. And uh, I don't know uh, if the lizard man is not really a lizard man or if he is or whatever. I... You know, I don't know. Maybe a dog did it, but I don't know why. Uh, I mean, there's been speculation. My first thought would be, I mean, if you if it's a cool night and you park your van, you know, it's warm, you go to bed, and maybe, you know, cats. We've had cats in our cars before to get up in the motor if you park outside. You have to be careful, especially if you're a cat owner because they like to get in there and, you know, you start up your motor and, eh, Garfield's gone. Um <laughs> So you gotta you gotta be you gotta be careful. I had a brother who did that. That was one of the better yeah well expressions I think I've heard. Yeah well you know. Anyways, um, I actually had a brother that had that. They had a lot, uh, quite a few cats, and um, I think he accidentally did one in one morning because he came out and started his car, and there was one in the motor, and he got caught up in the fan or whatever. Um, so anyways. Yeah, that would be my speculation. Yeah, my thought would be, okay, cat's got in the warm motor and some kind of wild dogs, coyotes or something maybe came up, but I don't know. Um, it's kind of a lot of damage. I can't only imagine whatever did this, what it did to their, to the grill, you know, their dental work there. It had to be, yeah. I mean, that would tear up your gums and everything. You see the damage that it did to this car. But what it, what it was interesting is I didn't know was when the Christopher Davis story broke that actually about, um, I want to say it was like two weeks, maybe it was two months, um, prior to Christopher Davis was uh, the Mitchells. They had a Dodge Journey, which is yeah, coincidental to me. I mean, two Dodges got attacked, but it had the same kind of deal, same kind of damage bumper was gnawed on or whatever. But this happened you know, in 1988, prior to Christopher Davis, but it didn't really come out until the Christopher Davis incident. Um, and then you fast forward to 2008, 10 years later, you had the Rossons have this happen on a Dodge Grand Caravan. I don't know, maybe there's 
they maybe had cats and had nothing to do with it. Maybe there's something in those bumpers that some critter out there likes and wanted to chew on it. Thought it was some food, but um, interesting stuff. I don't know. Um, so, you have anything to add, buddy, to the little lizard man? Not really. A lot of those uh, key encounters, um, there's evidence, like you said. There was the uh, there's the tracks and the the bumper damage and uh, Christopher Davis's uh, roof and you know uh, there's a lot of evidence out there and uh, it it can be you know quite hard to fake evidence because you can't just you know their their bumper you know had teeth holes and you can't just take a jackhammer to your bumper it's you know it's gonna it just you have to be a certain kind of crazy to fake evidence because if you fake evidence you know you're just disproving it. but um you know there's a lot of evidence and i believe that you know it really could exist and you know there's a lot of evidence to prove it could exist right i mean but it, it, what's funny to me about the whole situation is that the majority of the sightings or you know, incidents that happened um, didn't, th there was no lizard man, you know, described. It was a Bigfoot type creature. So, you know, either lizard man is actually a Bigfoot or you have two kind of cryptids running around in Bishopville, which is, you know, it's quite possible. I mean, I mean you went to the skateboard swamp area mm -hmm. in Lee County. A, um, just a couple weeks ago. It's a big area, and it, it's not like uh, Congaree or you know some of the smaller places that we have. It's you know it's pretty large. That, that we walk some trails up there, and uh, there's a lot more to it than the trails we walk. But from what we saw, it was you know it was pretty large. So I think it's entirely possible that there's more than one cryptid up there. Yeah, well, Congaree. I mean, just to correct you a little bit. Congaree is actually a bigger area, mm -hmm. but we the part we go to is. It's smaller in yeah. comparison, but Congaree is a vast area, but we've never ventured into that part because you have to walk quite a ways and you can get into some hairy areas back there. But anyways, um, if you if you look, what I what I found interesting is I just went to Google Maps and I looked at Scape or Swamp and um, zoomed out. And what I found interesting is that whole watershed there, the the scape or swamp that bottom land if you zoom out you can see all the greenery if you look at a satellite view on google maps if you zoom out and you look at how that those fingers feed if you come down to where they come from they root those those green bottom lands you can follow the creeks and stuff and they all come down they grow and they go down towards you know you've got the the congaree and the watery come down and they continue down and they go into Lake Marion and then on the other side of that all of it eventually comes down to Francis Marion National I think it's National Forest which is down close to Awanda just north of Charleston and Mount Pleasant South Carolina um, that area is has been rich with sightings people have seen you know hairy bipeds walk in in those in that forest um so, um, I think it's, you know, it, it, it's not uncommon to, to see something like this in any one of those areas, those bottom land areas. Um, in, in Mark, um, in Lyle Blackburn's book, uh, there's a local researcher here in South Carolina that had a sighting in Sparkleberry Swamp, which is in that general area, I mean, you come down from Scape or Swamp and you start heading down towards the coast. Um, Sparkleberry Swamp, Swamp is right along that way. It's right above Lake Marion. And he uh, supposedly saw two Sasquatches in there. Um, so, I mean, it's not... It's For those that believe that it's possible, um, it's, it, you know, for me, it's not hard to believe that these things are in the area it could be around bishopville and scape or swamp i really in south carolina I think anywhere where there's a bottom land um like that is possible um it's got everything they need it's got a lot of vegetation um a lot of water 
Uh, so therefore, it's got a lot of animals. It's going to have a lot of deer, um, you know, raccoons, whatever else it might decide it wants to munch on. Um, it's going to have you know some kind of fruit, you know, wild fruit, you know, stuff it can eat uh, from the plant life. Um, not only you know just animals, but um, yeah, I think it's uh, the lizard man. I'm not so sold on, but you know, the, definitely Bigfoot and possible misidentification. Um, yeah, with it being a Bigfoot and not a lizard man, I, I'm all for that. I, I think that's probably what happened, but um, I don't know. Christopher Davis swore that what he saw had three fingers and it had long claws and it was reptilian. Um, so I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Davis is no, long, no longer with us. He got uh, killed in the home invasion, I think in 2011. So uh, uh, unfortunate for him, but... Um, he it was yeah it's great that he came forward and that we you know got this information that we did from him um i'd like to go into you know if you're cool with it just go into some other lizard man reptilian type creatures um sightings that have happened throughout history um and just some other possibilities you know possibly not necessarily possibilities but um some other Supposed lizard man type sightings and then maybe some explanations for what it could be besides, you know, being a misidentified Sasquatch. Um, um, let's see. I guess one of one that um, these were all covered in Lyle Blackburn's book. Um, but um, the Loveland Frogs, I've heard of them before. I didn't really know a whole lot about them. Um, but basically, there was a couple sightings in 1955, 1972, it looks like. Uh, 1955, there were a couple sightings. Um, they were described as bipedal creature. Uh, they looked like a frog, three to four feet tall um, and frog-like with a large mouth that went from side all the way across its head. Um, most of them described them as having lots of sharp teeth. Um, what's interesting about the, I guess, the initial sightings in 1955, the Loveland, Ohio sightings, that, that's where the name Loveland Frogs came from, um, is that they were both, I believe, seen by police officers. Um, let's see. Yeah. And um, I believe both of them, um, one of them, because of his ridicule, he just kind of shut down about them. Um, wouldn't, um, wouldn't, you know, talk so much about him, um, after his initial report. And then the, uh, I think a couple of weeks after that initial report, another police officer or patrolman saw one, um, cross, I guess standing in the road and he got out, I believe to check it out. And I think it came at him or approached him or something. Um, I can't believe, I believe one of them, I believe he might have shot at it. Anyways, years later when he was interviewed um, by the news, he blew it all off and said it was obviously, it was just a pet lizard. Um, so it's pretty sure that, you know, he probably just didn't want to get ridiculed. Um, got tired of being ridiculed or something, so. He totally changed his story um, from what he initially reported. Um, 1972, um, there were some high school students that saw the same type creature. Um, they were yeah, three to four foot bipedal frog-like animals with grayish green skin. Um, and then also in 1972, a farmer witnessed four of these creatures. Um, in his field and he just watched them and they eventually hop, hopped off or walked off or whatever towards uh, the river. Um, also 1955 uh, there was an incident in Evansville, Indiana. Of course there was not a sighting on this one. Um, it was a lady swimming and uh, she almost got pulled under the water by a clawed hand, as she reported, and it uh, left a slimy green 
palm print on her calf. Um, and there's some other ones, the Thetis Lake Monster. Um, I believe that's in British Columbia. There was some incidents in 1972, 2006. Um, you have some Gator Man sightings that, uh, from New Jersey, Saginaw, Michigan, and uh, Stevensport, Kentucky. Um, the Stevensport, Kentucky one was by a nine-year-old boy who heard something outside of his bedroom window. Looked out, didn't see anything, so he went into the living room. This was like one o'clock in the morning or something. And uh, went into the living room, looked outside, and sees an amphibious humanoid standing in his yard. Awesome. Uh, I'd be, a, can't imagine going through that. And nine year old, I'd be a little freaked out. But, anyways, some um, other things. Uh, these weren't sightings, but there's some explanations, you know, for the Lizard Man frenzy of Bishopville. Um, yeah. Some people claim they're underground reptoids. Some claim they're part of the reptilian agenda. I don't know. Those all, if you look at all those, they all, <laughs> yeah. I that, know, that's, that's one of my uh, more favorite, uh, not necessarily, um, it's, it's one of the funnier, not funnier, but uh, one of the better things that I consider the, the reptilian society kind of conspiracy theory. That's my... Uh, that's one I like to uh, kind of not really elaborate on, but um, to think that there are people out there that think that there are reptilian humanoids that have gained not necessarily sentience, but achieved you know a higher thought process and have their own agenda and taking over the government and they have some kind of <laughs> some kind of interest with politics and you know everybody. We're going to take over the government from Scape or Swamp. Yeah, that they think that everyone in the in the government is a lizard and they're all you know. <laughs> that's that's one of my more. Well, that's I mean that's if you're gonna if that's what it is if you're some uber smart reptilian creature you know and you're running around skateboard swamp at three o'clock in the morning trying to steal bags of fish or filet yeah <laughs> i don't uh yeah we need nutrients to take over the world yeah they require <laughs> fish fillets we require mcdonald's it's got enough preservatives to last until they get back to the mothership mm-hmm. i don't know uh yeah i think that's far-fetched because i, I think the whole being a, a superior creature you know yeah, not necessarily. The same. Why would you be running around at three o'clock in the morning chewing on Dodge Caravans or so, what? You know, then you know, ten days later, you're yeah, you're in the White House, you know. Yeah. Know, secretary. Hurry, we got to get to the tunnel. <laughs> got to shoot up the White House and take over the world. Oh, I meant to uh, say something while you're talking about the uh, the Loveland frogs. Um, I do a lot of studies and like archaeology and that kind of stuff interests me. And there's. Um, Creatures and stuff uh, that I've studied called Bezel Bufo or Bezel Buffo, however you want to pronounce it. And they were these huge frogs that, you know, lived around the, uh, when there was more carbon dioxide in the air and everything was, you know, a lot bigger than it is today. Um, what they call that? The uh, megafauna world. Yeah, that yeah. was when the ferns were huge and, you know, everything was super, you know, big. Everything There's a different was a atmospheric larger. ratio and, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of different uh, chemicals and gases in the air, which, you know, cause things to get a lot bigger. But, um... Plus, you had that protective layer over the... What they call that? Around the earth? The that ozone. kept like Yeah, there like... There were a lot of green gases, greenhouse yeah. gases in the earth. Um, but, you know, there were these huge frogs that, you know, were five, six feet long and had, you know, tongues that could reach seven feet, but... Those that kind of reminded me of that talking about the the giant frogs that were you know hopping around and you know not necessarily you know chewing up bumpers but just kind of being around in the wild and talking about how scientists have predicted their behavior they weren't super they weren't hunters they just you know hopped around until they found something to eat and then they ate it because they were huge they could eat whatever they wanted. And, um, you know, not necessarily an aggressive nature. They're just kind of roaming around, you know, that, you know, not necessarily saying that they attacked anybody hearing that, um, were definitely reminded me of them. So, yeah, I had never heard of those, 
but I mean, you gotta. I mean, you think it's one thing to see a, a 800 pound Sasquatch that's got four foot wide shoulders and is eight feet tall. I mean, that's pretty bad. It'd be a bad situation to run into one of those in the, in the middle of the woods. Uh, but you know, there's something to be said too for a three to four foot of tall bipedal frog with a mouthful of razor sharp teeth looking at you. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to run to either one. I don't believe. I, I would like to see. You I'd know, like to see them, but just not, yeah, you know. from a distance. You know, preferably <laughs> in a armored vehicle with a rangefinder. Yeah, know. for real. And have a fifty caliber. Yeah, forty times scope on a yeah, fifty BMG. Something I could be able to you know pop a cap in them if I had to. Um, but um, another thing I, I found interesting, I, and I, I didn't do a lot of research on this. I, I did a bit, but not as much as should have. But it was uh, it was also uh, stated in Lyle Blackburn's book. But then I did some quick Google searches on it. But it was uh, I, I'm not sure he pronounces the in. in in Zygnanin, they were <laughs> the Native Americans in South Carolina. I can't remember the name of the tribe, but they believe that these creatures exist and that they're reptilian creatures that live in cave systems, um, which I don't believe we have a lot of in South Carolina, but apparently there's a few, mm-hmm. and these, these Indians believe that, or Native Americans believe that these people... Uh, are these creatures existed in that um, that could also be um, an explanation for the lizard man um, and, and it's interesting because there are some um, drawings if you look online there's some some actual Native American paintings like you know wall or cave paintings or whatever that show you know like reptilian lizard type creatures that are bipedal or appear to be bipedal um, so that's a that's an interesting spin on it too. Um, I think you know at the end of the day, um, when I I look at all the cases and um, look at the the reports I found online as well as uh, read uh, just recently, like I said, Bla, uh, Lyle Blackburn's book on the Lizard Man, the Bishop Bill Lizard Man. Um, I I gotta say that you know maybe Chris. Christopher Davis was mistaken, um, and what we are actually dealing with is just a, a Sasquatch. I mean, they've been seen in South Carolina before, um, plenty of times, and in various parts of the, the state. Um, I think a, a perfect place for them, you know, other than you know the upper part of the state up towards the, the mountains, um, up in the upper corner, um, is perfect habitat for them because there's a lot of uh, forest land, a lot of mountains, a lot of places where people don't live, uh, and there's plenty of resources for them. But the second, and maybe even uh, a better place for them, will be down towards the bottomlands and towards the coast, which would be places like Scape or Swamp, all the way down into um, the uh, Francis Mary National Forest and that whole area in Berkeley County and Awanda. Um, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think what we're dealing with is just a Sasquatch, and uh, but it was kind of cool to live through the lizard man thing and um, and you know still to have that out there. I don't think it's as uh, big a deal in Bishopville from what we saw. I mean, there's some signs and stuff about it, but it's and I think they have a part of the Cot Museum down there that has a lizard man, uh, some lizard man, I guess. Uh, paraphernalia or whatever in there and we didn't have the when we were in uh, Bishopville we didn't have the opportunity to go there because it was on a Sunday and it was closed down but I think uh, after reading Lyle's book um, and finding out some more specifics about where a lot of this took place I think probably in the next couple weeks we'll probably make another trek down there and actually check down uh, check out the the locations where things went down and uh, just get a better feel for it. Um, uh, definitely go down Browntown Road where a lot of the sightings happened. Um, we didn't we didn't know that's where it happened prior to that. So uh, we may primarily stayed in on Highway 34 at the Escape or Swamp, and then went to the Lee Lee County or the Lee State Park and uh, looked around down there. But um, 
I don't know. It's, it's interesting to uh, to think, you know, maybe there is another cryptid out there that we're unaware of, or maybe it is just a, a Bigfoot. Um, regardless, it's unexplained, but uh, it's definitely a reality to some people. And in some some form or, you know, it's a reality, whether it's a Sasquatch or it's actual lizard man. We have both of them running around. Um, but it's a cool home down, hometown uh, creature or cryptid. And uh, I know it, it pumped a lot of money into Bishopville, South Carolina back in the day uh, for not being, um, you know, a big place at all it's just a tiny little town um but they embraced it gotta say that and uh the sheriff down there uh that was the sheriff back then he really uh, took it all in stride i mean you know a lot of law enforcement would just blow something like this away and think people are crazy and uh he didn't do that he he legitimately investigated to the best of his abilities and i think there's a lot to be said for that i think um you know he he should be commended. I'm not. I'm not sure if he's uh, still around. For some reason, I'm thinking he passed away, but I'm not positive on that. Um, well, anyways, I think that's a, a wrap for us for the night. Um, not sure what our next subjects are going to be, and uh, I don't know if we get once we get this out there and get it uploaded, and some people hear it, you might tell us to get off the air and quit wasting people's time and taking up wonderful glorious bandwidth on the internet i don't know you got any closing remarks there buddy um any ideas for next next uh episode i say we do the reptilian society next episode oh that's, lord that's a that's like a couple episodes there that's, yeah, a, that's a big old ball of wax right there but um yeah if you guys uh enjoy this or don't enjoy this definitely uh you know tell us in the comments or you know ratings uh you know just just give us an overall, you know, what we can improve, you know, what we're doing good on, you know, anything, anything you want to tell us, advice, whatever, uh, you know, share with your friends if you really enjoy it and you think you know someone who might enjoy it. Um, and with that, I think we come to a close. Yeah, and I'll just add that, um, um, like I said, this comes, most of this information came from Lyle Blackburn's book on the Lizard Man. Um, you can check him out at lyleblackburn.com. Is makes his books are awesome, all of them. Um, I've actually got his latest one already bought and on my iPad, so uh, it's going to be read here shortly. I've got about three books ahead of it. Um, so uh, check him out. Check out his books. Uh, he's in a lot of stuff, and uh, it, it, he puts out some some great stuff. Um, uh, I would say our email address is unexplained dot reality at yahoo.com um so you can shoot us a message there and leave us some feedback um whatever podcaster or podcatcher you're using um to listen to us uh please rate us and uh leave us feedback as harrison said you know some comments whatever uh beat us up if you have to that's just what it's going to take um for us to get better and uh if you you know, hopefully we're going to get our website up and um, have some ability to hopefully get some donations or something to help us get better equipment and um, hopefully bring a, a better quality show. But uh, right now, this is what you got. And this is what it is. And uh, that's a wrap for tonight. Appreciate you guys listening, and um, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to Unexplained Reality. Please drop us a line at unexplained.reality at yahoo.com. We also ask that you rate this podcast through your favorite podcasting app. The more feedback you provide, the better opportunity we have to improve it. Also, we would like to take this opportunity to thank some of our favorite podcasts who have helped to inspire us to embark on this podcast journey. And we would ask that you give them a listen if you haven't already. Sasquatch Chronicles, Into the Fray Radio, OK Talk, Sas What, Expanded Perspectives, The Graylian Report, Mysterious Universe, The Confessionals, and Monsters Among Us.
A paragraph on a piece of paper Held by a magnet on the refrigerator Said it all He changed the mind of an 18-year-old Cloud of dust coming from a Gran Torino Taking off Population one less restless soul Run away to below Just make it up as you go Run away 